So, Boy George. Yeah, Boy George. You're, you worked with, and I think you did, you did production as well as play on and also composed or uh, you- yeah i wrote with with george and um bobby z who w- uh, was the drummer with uh Re- the revolution prince's first band he was the, he was the original drummer before sheila e came in oh i didn't know that yeah okay yeah, yeah so bobby um you know bobby's from minneapolis and he he was he was pretty close to prince you know i only know the keyboard player from oh because he has the same name as you Wait, from Matt from Fink. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, doctor. He's a Do- doctor. Doctor Fink. Is, doctor. Is, is, is he a Matt? I don't know. Doctor Matt Fink. He yeah, is that, Matt Fink. Yeah. Totally Matt Fink. Yeah. He used to oh, wear wow. a mask. You see, he was way ahead of his time. He had a mask as well. Yeah, wow. that's that's the revolution, right? That's the, that was the revolution. Yeah, so okay. Bobby was the drummer. Gotcha. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know. Um, but I I met George through. Um, do you know Stuart Levine? Great producer. He, he produced I know the name, but I, I Joe Cocker and. Um, Oh, B.B. King, okay. The Crusaders, famously. Okay. That, that string of great Crusaders records. Okay. Southern Comfort, all of that. That's all produced by Stuart. So I'd, I'd met Stuart. Shall I just go, go down this? Go, yeah, go I, down the I, rabbit I, hole. I'm, I'm going fascinated. down the rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, please. So, um, you know, so early 80s, I was I was kind of, you know, I was starting to get a few sessions. And, and um, uh, I think, I, yeah, I was already working with Paul Brady, actually, at, as well at that point. And, and this is all in England? This is all in England. Okay. And Ireland, actually, to some degree. Ireland, okay. Europe, anyway. It was all in Europe. And um, Stuart, um, who actually lived, I don't, I don't think he lives there anymore, but he lived in Big Indian, which is just up the road from Woodstock. Sure. Very, very near to here. And he had a production company called uh, Olive, Olivera Productions, because, you know. Yeah, Olivera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, he came to London um, just look, looking to do some interesting stuff as a producer. And uh, he worked with a guy called Stan Campbell, who had had a record called Free Nelson Mandela, which is a big hit. So I made a record with uh, Stuart producing and Stan. And uh, Hugh Masekela was on that record. Cause... Oh, my God. My dad used to play with Hugh Masekela. Oh, really? Yeah. See? Small world. Small world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Stuart and and Hugh used to be roommates when Hugh first came to the States. Oh, wow. He was sort of in exile, you know. So there's a whole backstory to that. But any, anyway, so Hugh was on that record as well. So I kind of hit it off with Stuart. And it was, like, he, you know, I, he liked my playing, you know. So, um so the the boy George thing, I'll, I'll come back to the Paul thing as well. But the boy George thing was, um, I was actually playing with Paul Brady. We were touring the west of Ireland, and because there's no cell phones in those days, so yeah. um, it was really hard to get hold of people. <laughs> right? and, and I was staying in this little tiny motel in the west of Ireland. We were playing with Paul. We were playing some really out of the way places. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of a little bit cowboyish, but it was great. It was great fun. It was a great band. Um, Paul's an incredible singer songwriter. Yeah. Um, so th- I'm in this motel, and the guy from the, you know, the reception guy, just kind of came and banged on the door and said, "Hello, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have a phone call for you. It's some guy from America. You know, it's Stuart. Anyway, uh, so this would have been about '85, even now. I guess it's like late '85. It was when Culture Club had split up, gotcha. which is Boy George's band, and. Um, They'd all fallen out pretty fast, like <laughs> pop bands do. Yeah. So, um, what an amazing run, though. Oh, they had a great run. You oh know? my god! But then, they, then it just did what pop bands often do. They were like, "Oh, we all hate each other." <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so then they, the record company had gotten to cut a long story short. Um, so, yeah, there's Stuart on the phone, and he says, "Oh, you know, you know, George is like he's out of Culture Club. You know, so Virgin have asked me to produce a record." And, um, and he's getting a lot of press intrusion at the moment. So we thought we'd do it in Air Montserrat Studios, which was George Martin's place. Oh, okay. So I'm going, hmm, this sounds good, you know. That sounds good. And he's yeah. like, and we're going to get L- Lamont Dozier's coming from, you know, the Motown guy. And I'm like, this is like dream, What are the odds that you're mentioning true. the same person that I, I just mentioned? Wow. Right. And and he's like, yeah, so we'll fly out to Montserrat for a month. You know, it's really nice. We'll stay in George Martin's house. And he's like, are you in? I'm like... <laughs> I have to think of it. No, I mean, I was like, <laughs> are you kidding? You yeah. know? Yeah. So that's how I met George. And, um, and yeah, the next, you know, I guess it was about three, four weeks later, we flew out to, you couldn't fly direct, actually, in those days. It was, I think we flew to Miami, then to Antigua, 
and then a really scary little plane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bet. Um, and then there we were, you know, in this amazing studio with a beautiful Neve desk on a, on a tropical island. Wow. So, um, you know, I was, I was pretty lucky, you know, because, I mean, what you think, well, what, what if I hadn't been at the motel? And the, or the guy had gone, oh, I don't know, you know, I don't know that. Yeah. When if you didn't play as brilliantly as you do. Well, that's yeah, very kind. But, yeah. <laughs> so that's how I met George. And then we, you know, we just worked together for, I guess, I don't know, through the 80s. The rest of the 80s, we on and off, we were writing. and um, So Lamont Dozier is writing with you? He co-wrote most of that first album. I, I, yeah, I only wow. co-wrote one track on that Um I was like new, so I was like, but then the next record um, was not Stuart. Um, Bob, and then Bobby was up to produce it. And then, um, so we got together, myself, Bobby and George, and started writing Wow, for the album. And then that became um, an album called, there was actually two that spun off from that, Hi Hat, and this other one was called Tense Nervous Headache. <laughs> I know that was that a slogan here. <laughs> it was a, it was an advertising slogan in the UK. Tense, nervous, headache. Take Advil or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So it was, that was the name of the album. Tense, nervous, headache. Wow. Yeah. Um, I don't remember that advertising campaign, but that sounds. <laughs> that sounds so that's how right. that all happened, you know. And it was just great fun, and you know, not to go back into the money thing, but there was, you know, it was Virgin Records, it was Richard Branson. There was money, just. The music business was just awash with money because they were just selling bucket loads of bits of plastic. Yeah. Which is probably terrible for the planet, you know, but that's what it was. 